my friends. This is your host, Seishu, and thanks for joining me for another edition of TiffinCast. I am with Mike Gerard, who's the inventor um, of Panlight, which is a really interesting device that he's come out with. He's a photographer, a wedding photographer based in England, and I am really, really excited to talk to him because, uh, first of all, this Panlight thing that he's come up with uh, is a Kickstarter uh, campaign that's already funded. So I'm, I'm not here to promote it or pitch it or anything like that other than tell you that you know you should definitely check it out. But I wanted to ask Mike uh, a few questions about how he got started even thinking about using or co even designing something like this. So Mike, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Sashi. Good to be here. It's great. Uh, listen, uh, thanks for making the time. I know it's, uh, I don't know what time it is out there, but it's, it's definitely later than here. Um, I, uh, right off the bat, you're a wedding photographer uh, who on the side decides to create something incredible. And it's, 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 a, it's a device that's already funded on K Kickstarter. What, what motivated you to do this in the first uh, place? Well, uh I mean, you're right in saying I'm a wedding photographer. I've been doing that for about 10 years, and it's just something that, that came about through me thinking, you know, I'd really like to be doing less of this going back to the light stand uh, and changing things. Um, so it's, it's come about just naturally through through the work I do. Yeah. Let's explain, though, for the folks who haven't really clicked on the Kickstarter campaign page to see the awesome video uh, of, of how Panlight works. What does Panlight do for photographers, really? Okay, so it is a, it's a remote control device. Um, you, you clip it to the top of a light stand or a tripod, and it lets you move your um, flashlight, so a, a hot shoe speed light type flash, um, or some other things which we'll talk about, like, like cameras. Um, and it lets you just control through sort of uh, 360 degrees panning um, and nearly 180 degrees of tilting uh, where it points. So in other words, you don't have to go back to your device, whether that's a camera or a flash, to actually change which way it points now. Oh, wonderful. So I could be in uh, point A of, of, let's say, a reception uh, photographing the couple, and I could have an off-camera light set up uh, maybe 45 degrees off of me or the couple, and essentially I can, from where I am, reset the angle of the strobe pointing down to them. Is that right? Exactly right. That's one of its uses. So during portrait time, if you're a wedding photographer, exactly that. Um, if you've got spill happening in the wrong places, like on the floor or the walls, and you want to just refine that slightly, you don't have to go back to your stand, lower the sort of the telescopic end of it oh, and, wow. and change it. Excellent. Excellent. Um, you know, I was, I was telling you before we just started recording how I got into this rather awkward situation just yesterday with a client where I was trying to lower the lower a stand and readjust the the light and things like that and it looked really just horrific uh <laughs> and she was wondering what the hell i was doing back there um because it was it was a hair light i was trying to yeah. readjust you know um it all worked out fine but i wish i had the the pan light to to really just point at it and just bring that light back down exactly where i want it which is kind of cool which is you know your your pan light doesn't just go in increments of you know you know, in spaces, it's just, it, it's almost, you can yeah, accurately bring exactly. it down to where you want it to be, right? It was really important to set the, 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 the RPM of the motors, the, you know, what's actually driving this, um, to set them to be, to move quite slowly because accuracy is, is, is what I want, not necessarily speed of movement. We are going to have a sort of a fast and a slow pace for the panning, so you can make it turn around a room pretty quickly, but particularly for the tilt, um, we, we also want to make sure we have a slow setting, so you can you can get that, that level of control rather than sort of jumping to sort of a, a 10 degree tilt or something, yeah. Awesome. Um, how is this powered, by the way? Uh, it takes batteries. Um, it takes four AA batteries right now. Um, we decided not to go with lithium ion um, because it just means one more charger to carry. It means charging the battery more regularly. Um, and if you if you ever ran out of power, not that hopefully you will, it, it's going to be um, you know hard to find something to, to fit in there you know on, on the day. So we, we went with four AA batteries, um, and uh, yeah, they seem to slide in there really nicely. So excellent. Uh, is it possible to to use this with a modifier? Is yes. It uh, it? So, some modifiers and not others. So okay. things that are things that are what you have to be uh, conscious of is uh, I have a flash gun here. Yeah. Um, as you as you move away from the balance point. So if, in other words, if you, when you're tilting your flash, right. um, As soon as you start to get really far away from the balance point, anything that's you know a long distance from that becomes you know significantly more more heavy. So you need to provide a lot more power, which means 
a bigger unit, more batteries, more noise, all that sort of stuff. So we, we don't want to have any of that. So um, things that are relatively lightweight and fit right next to the flash um, are fine. Things like grids or bounce cards, um, uh, some of these sort of um, uh, uh, diffusers are absolutely fine. Um, if you want to go into bigger things like um, umbrellas and soft boxes, which obviously, although are quite lightweight, have a really long distance from the, the center of sort of balance, um, those are not going to be able to work. So, yeah. Okay, so the uh, the ideal situation would be to use something like uh, I don't know if you've heard of Magmod, right? Uh, yeah, and I, and I know Spencer now. He's uh, he's a good guy. He's, he's helped the project. So yeah, Magmod Excellent. has been a, a, a you know a great product. Also started on Kickstarter. Right, I just started using uh, all their Magmod diffusers, and yeah. I, I love it. And I I can see essentially just using those, which are yeah. fairly lightweight. I mean, I use I use gridded flash all the time. Do so you? Okay. Um, uh, for reception lighting at weddings, for portraits, I, I just want to be able to control that that spill really well. So um, yeah, it was absolutely fundamental for this to you know. And I think the people using this um, product, they're not going to be necessarily you know amateurs are just getting into this. They're they're going to be you know experienced photographers who who need speed, who need accuracy, um, who want convenience. Um, and you know, those those guys are also going to be using um, grids. Right. Uh you know, I, I would assume that most photographers who are starting to even consider this uh, as an option for them uh, would like to have one unit, but would you suggest perhaps one or two or three units just to keep handy? Or it, I mean, it all depends on how you shoot. Um, yeah. I mean, cer certainly, I mean, we're selling a twin pack and it's almost been as popular as, as the single unit um, okay. on, on Kickstarter. And I think that's because a lot of photographers, they are using um, two lights for their for their lighting. So they, they might have, you know, uh, cross lighting on a dance floor. They might be shooting with um, a, a hair light or a rim light, as you suggest, and a, and a front light. So, yeah, people are shooting with, with, with two flashes. Um, the unit itself can control up to four from one remote so you have a you have a channel switch on there which basically lets you just you know um, choose a channel that each panel light is on one two three or four and then you on the remote you slide a little channel switch and it's, it's controlling the right one independently so yeah you have that option excellent um, just throwing you a curveball uh, the event that I do want to change the power setting on the flash uh, and I don't want to do that uh, essentially by going up and you know, bringing it down and then changing yeah. the. Is there what what tool would you recommend in terms uh, of moving? It all that depends. It all depends which which camera system you're shooting. Whether okay. it's um, Nikon, Canon, uh, mirrorless. I, th I think that's something that's controlled independently. I mean, on the on the Canon 600EX flash, for example, it's it's done through the through, through the flash itself, okay. or or the or the transmitter. Um, Nikon's, you have all the, the variety of things: radio poppers and Photix and Pocket Wizard, all those sort of good companies for, for triggers. Right. And then some of these, some of these new ones like Cactus and Neon and stuff. So all those things can sit on uh, a strobe and Absolutely. also be on the pan light, right? Yeah, it was a primary consideration actually. I had to make sure because I shoot Canon. Um, oh. I, I use the 600 system, which doesn't have a, a transmitter or receiver attached to it, a third-party thing. Right. Um, so when I started design, I had to be quite conscious of designing something for, for everything. And yeah, some of these things like Pocket Wizards, you know, they, they do sit underneath the flash itself. So we need to make sure that both slide on and, and are, are allowed to tilt. So it absolutely works with that, yeah. What has contributed to the success of your campaign? Like, why, has it, why, why was it so quickly funded? I mean, you got 17 days to go, my friend. And you still, I mean, you're still, people are still putting money in, into this campaign, right? Yeah, and, and we're, we're massively grateful for that. It's, it's going to mean that additional features can, can be added, hopefully, which I'm going to make it up later about soon. But it's, um, yeah, to why, why the success? I think two things, really. One, it is a pretty cool product. And, and, you know, I think people can instantly see where they could use it and where they could sort of add creativity, not just like functionality, but also do new things with, with it if they had one. But I, I just I want to say a big thanks to all my friends really who've, who've got behind it and done lots of sharing. Um, so many good people who, who've sort of you know shared the word on Facebook and given me little testimonials and things. So that was a huge huge part of the success I think in the first couple of days. Excellent. Um, I know you have a unit that's uh, uh, available for us to check out. Can can you just sort of lift yeah. it up and show us yeah. exactly have, what this uh, might look like? Have, this is this is the prototype. Um, okay. So we have uh, we have the unit here. Yeah. And I'll just hold it a little closer to the camera. You can see those little buttons on the top for the right. channel switch, uh, um, which is there, the, the hot shoe mount on the top there. Um, and yeah, that's, that's about the size of it. Okay. So um, we, it, it, you know, when you come to production, we hope to make a little bit of size savings. Um, it, just things that you can do in production that you can't do in manufacturing, that you can't do in prototyping just because you have to have parts custom made when you manufacture. Right. Um, so we're hopeful to do a little bit of sort of size benefit there. But. Yeah. How heavy is the unit? Uh, right now, I think it's about 750 grams. So it's it's um, it's it's lighter than your camera. <laughs> and, <laughs> One would uh, hope, yeah. 
Yeah, well, yeah, very much so. I mean, it, it, it has to be light because it has to sit on the top of a light stand, which could be 10, 12 feet in the air right. um, and not sort of, you know, be, be, be wobbling around, which absolutely would, would make it pointless. So, um, yeah, we, we, we wanted to make it as light as we can. And actually, that number should go down rather than up in production because, again, we can cast more things out of plastic. Right now, this, this prototype is made of metal because it has to be bent. Um, we can't we can't make uh, custom mouldings just for prototyping. It's really expensive. Sure. Um, so yeah, some of that some of that stuff will, will come down, not not go up. Excellent. How do you how do you envision photographers using this? Um, and are you limiting the use only to wedding photographers, or do you see portrait photographers also being able to use this? I, I see a lot of uses, and actually, it, it's it's almost growing daily because as we do more development on the product, um, the I mean, obviously, it was conceived as myself as I'm a wedding photographer. It was conceived with that in mind. Um, but I mean, I've, I've used it just in prototyping for other things because some commercial work where I just, you know, I need to have multiple light setups for, for shooting some company people and things like that. Um, so it has uses like that. Um, obviously, we've expanded the potential for it hugely just by being able to mount cameras. Um, so flash is one thing, and it was it was the initial thought behind making it. But really quickly, we, we realized that actually you can move all sorts of things on this. You could move continuous lights like LED lighting. You could move cameras. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're really exploring that right now. And just at a wedding recently, I was able to put a, put a light stand really high in the air um, and shoot a big aerial shot of like 150 people as, as a group photo, which um, sort of before then I'd be, have to be quite a long way away or find access to something quite, quite high up. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's growing. I'm finding new uses. And I'm, I'm excited to see what the users do with it when, when they get their hands on one so they can tell me what it's good for too. Excellent. Now, I do see that you are, as you said, uh, using it to uh, hold lighter mirrorless cameras perhaps. Um, That's right. How, how would those be triggered though? If you were to leave them up in the air, so, so far use, away. using using their apps, um, there would need okay. to be a, wi a Wi-Fi enabled camera, which which most of those are the the newer Fuji models, the Olympus, uh, the ones that I have experience of. There there are plenty others, <laughs> yep. but um, but uh, using their own wi Wi-Fi apps, which are which are really reliable, um, and it's great because you can use your phone to sort of you know hold and see see what's actually being composed, and use the pan light remote to, to move the camera. No kidding, so you can, really? Yes, yeah, so, so, you, so you can you can basically you can see what you're shooting, um, wow. which you'd have which you'd have to be obviously to see the composition. So it's it's <laughs> it's it's really opening things up. And I actually tested this at a at a wedding recently. Um, I keep referring back to weddings because that's what I do. But uh, but I, I used it. I used it there where I wasn't allowed to be at the front of a church ceremony. Um, the, the the priest was quite twitchy, and that, that was fine. Um, but uh, uh, so I, I dropped one of these just just you know with a with a sort of a fifty mil lens um, towards the front of the um, very close to where he was standing, and I was able to sort of position it and just make sure I got some at least sort of you know front facing shots of the couple during the ceremony. It worked a treat for that. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, that's that's one good piece of uh, you know. Advice, I guess you'd give a wedding photographer. You know, in the in the event that you can't get access, you can at least park your 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 cameras where the the action is taking place. Uh, I can see this being used by sports photographers, for instance. You know, it, it, it's it's crossed my mind. I mean, I I've actually shot some uh, some some football, some soccer before, um, and you get to put a camera on the pitch, but you don't get to to you know, be anywhere near it. Right. Um, so they kind of generally use uh, wide angle lenses and just sort of take a hope that what they're shooting is, is good action. Yeah. Um, this this would mean that could change potentially. Yeah. So as long as it's sort of you know controllable within, as long as you're within about a hundred feet, which would be absolutely fine for a sports shooter, then this right. this is interesting. Yeah. And and I think mirrorless is becoming a really big part of um, right. uh, photography now like pros adopting it into their um, into their sort of kit bag not necessarily as an exclusive system but just as an additional thing which is how I do it I have a I have an Olympus system that works alongside my Canon just sort of for certain shots okay uh, you mentioned the range which is a hundred feet Mm -hmm. is, is there any way you can extend that out to 200 feet or 300 feet? Is that happening in the future? So, so, so actually, I was having a conversation with designers about this today. Um, how that works is right, right now we can commit to 100 feet very easily because uh, in doing that, you, well, in using a, a low power radio system, um, it works really well. To get much beyond that, you have to move to sort of a, a, a more high power um, radio system. And the problem you have with that is uh, it requires much more. Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, you, you need much more regulation. So people like the FCC in the US and the CE marking over, over here that control radio bands and that sort of thing. It becomes a problem with those guys to, to use bigger stuff, which is why you'll see things like the Canon flashes are actually only, um, I, I believe I'm right in saying that they also say 30 meters or 100 feet. 
in reality, we hope to be tested and say, well, actually, in reality, it goes a lot more. Um, as long as you're not shooting through five brick walls and, uh, and you have a reasonable line of sight, then hopefully we should be able to achieve a fair amount more. Um, but it's a comfortable marketing statement to say it's sort of 100 feet right now. Okay. So it is a radio frequency? It is, it is a radio. It's a low-power radio frequency that, that lets you Got talk it. with the remote. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and, and I, think, I think I'm right in saying Bluetooth would be about the same if, if you use Bluetooth, but we, we, we just prefer a radio. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Uh, but there, there, you don't need line of sight. Right. Obviously, well, abso it abso things. Absolutely right. not. It, you know, it will sense. talk through walls and it will talk through everything. But obviously, each each wall that you put it through, it reduces things a little bit. I suppose. Absolutely. Uh, Mike jo uh, Mike Gerard, <laughs> thanks for joining me today. I appreciate you coming in and telling us a little bit more about Panlight. Um, it's going to be something that sits in my bag, I'm sure. Uh, you know, I, I will be backing it, although you don't need any more backers. But <laughs> you need, you definitely, you know, I see I see the numbers going up and up, and I'm thinking, wow, this guy's, you know. This guy's doing well. He's doing really good, and well, uh, nice. you know, I, I think I think as more photographers get to see how it can be used, uh, I think you're going to get a lot more people definitely uh, signing up for this. So thanks for joining me. Thanks. It's been an absolute pleasure, and uh, and, and yeah, thanks thanks for uh, thanks for dropping me a line. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Ashley. Bye.